Hi, welcome back. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, today I'm doing a quick video on uh, doing a review on the Odroid XU. So uh, here's the board and here's the Raspberry Pi by comparison. So this board is, oh sorry, the, the CPU core used on this board is the Exynos 5410 by Samsung, which is used in some variants of the Samsung S4, depending on the region. So it's a fairly powerful chip, mainly used them for mobile application. Um, I, I personally think this is the future. Well, look at look at the size of this, right? So um, this package and uh, it's good enough for mobile, and I think that's probably in a couple of years going to be good enough for um, for desktop applications. So you can use your main computer, which is one of the reasons why I ordered it, just to see how how it fares for actual desktop usage. Um, and I'll discuss that later on. So, um, yeah, so so as you can see, this thing has um, the Ethernet port, uh, four USB 2.0 port, a display port, um, video connector, and a micro HDMI. The uh, the device boots from a, uh, the, what is it, the micro SD card. And I think these are USB 3.0. And USB 3 host um, control interface and your your, your standard um, audio jack, right? So uh, let's plug this thing in and just let it run a little bit. I'll put in the micro SD card and a uh, Wi-Fi and then HDMI. All my other peripherals. Okay, and let's plug the power supply in. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's do this again. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that sometimes. Oh, it's my pet bird. She talks a lot. Um, so while I was booting, I'll just talk about a couple of things. So the cost, it's a little deceiving. So the board is advertised to be $170-ish USD. Um, but the problem is, it ships from Korea, right? So, um, hard kernel is from Korea. So, um, so there's automatically a $30 shipping baked into it. And I'm in Canada, so that's about a 10% premium for the currency conversion and another 3% for visa charging, the surplus charge, uh, service charge. And there's also another 30% uh, $30 when it's imported into Canada, right? And on top of that, I had to buy the SD card as well as the cable. So um, the total cost on my end actually ends up being about $300 ish. So it's a little on the expensive side, but then, you know, the same thing with all the development board, you need to purchase the peripherals. So whatever, right? Um, right, so another thing I wanted to mention is this development board, like keep in mind, this is a development board and then it's not as simple to you or it's not as, as um, beginner friendly say as the Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you look around on the internet, the, uh, the community has a, is very well established for the Raspberry Pi and then all the instructions are very clearly laid out. And then, you know, the, it lists all the compatibility modules and whatnot. And for this one, I had to, I, I had to actually purchase two different SD cards because the first one I purchased a data, um, it's faster, but I was getting some, all sorts of weird compatibility issues, whereas I had to buy a second Kingston SD card and I didn't experience the same um, uh, issues. For example, like um, after flashing, it doesn't boot. And I tried a couple of times, I couldn't, it just won't, won't boot. And sometimes it boot and then after it works for a couple of days, it fails to start up again and stuff like that. And Kingston didn't have that issue. Um, right. And then some other things, you know, for example, configuring the resolution, you need to go into a, a file um, in a bootloader and then, you know, configure or, or, or uh, set the value you want to drive the resolution, right? It's just stuff like that. So um, the standard image, so there are two images that you can use. So I believe there's the, oh, actually uh, there's a couple more. So there's Ubuntu 12 and there's Ubuntu 13. And I also believe you can use Android. So in my setup, I decided to use the Ubuntu just for the sake of it. And the default um, password is just Odroid. Yeah, she's quite noisy. Okay, 
So what I found, yeah, one of the limiting factor isn't so much the CPU power, it's actually the uh, uh, the SD card, because the SD card, so, so they provide the option of using EMMC or the SD card, but I cheaped out, so I decided to not purchase the MMNC card when I placed my order, and I found out that I can't actually find one in my local retailer, so I resorted to a uh, to the to, to the micro SD card, the class ten micro SD card. But even then, I think that only guarantees the read and write of above ten megabytes per second, and then I think a standard hard drive can do you know a couple hundred. So um, it's actually quite slow, and as you can tell. Um, yeah, so the bottleneck is more on the I.O. side, not so much, you know, the uh, the CPU. So, for example, I can just open up Firefox. So I believe the, snow, the slowness here is because it's fetching, you know, the browser um, from, from the file system instead of the, the actual CPU um, doing the processing. So, uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, try YouTube. So another problem that I found is, uh, uh, so depending on the operating system you use, so apparently if you go with Android, the driver support is much better. So my understanding is this board actually contains all the necessary hardware codec for say, you know, H.264 decode and whatnot. But uh, for whatever reason, um, they're just apparently there's apparently a long thread on uh, the old Roy from discussing why the driver is not there for uh, say Ubuntu so like the, the distro I'm using right now so um, if you just simply play do media playback so funny you notice that the playback is actually quite um, it's not smooth, and that's because all the decoding is done using the software, using the CPU instead of the uh, instead of the uh, the hardware decoder available on the chip. But if you run with the Android variant of it, apparently all the support is there, and then the playback is smooth. So, so it, it doesn't look too bad right now, but you can see it's not actually very smooth. If you try to full screen it, and then you know it sort of just kills the system. Um, yeah, so it's not optimal, but you know, depending on your usage, I wanted to use Ubuntu for development purposes, so I have to stick with it. Um, but for you know regular desktop usage, as you can see, it's not quite you know as snappy as you would have imagined. Um, so oh, sorry, can you just pull back a little bit? So so driver, no hardware deco, and then I want to play. Yeah, and then I mentioned the, the slow SD card read. Um, yeah, I also mentioned about the compatibility issue I wanted to talk about. Um, right, and then another thing I wanted to mention is, so this thing, oh, oops, I think I put the HDMI cable, no. right, so this thing marked itself as a octa-core, so I want to mention that the octa-core is actually sort of a marketing term, right, so because this thing, due to a chip defect, um, so there's, there, there's two sets of quad cores on this thing, right, there's a quad A15, and there's a quad A7. So depending on the power usage, when it's running in low power mode, it uses the A7. When it's running on the high power mode, it uses the A15. So A15 are the, the cores that pack the punch. Um, so the thing is, due to a chip defect, this, this board cannot actually run with all eight cores at the same time. But keep in mind that, you know, the A7 is only running at, you know, can only, uh, the output, of the A7 is only you know 20% of, of a single A15, right? So even even if you can run all A cores at the same time, you're getting roughly you know five A15. So which isn't you know that big of an improvement. But um, I, I when I ordered a board, I thought I could leverage all A cores, but it turns out that you can only run you know four at a given time. So um, keep it in mind, it's sort of a marketing thing. Um, what else did I want to talk about? So peripheral cost, not even apparently, software compatibility. Uh, um, actually, I think that's about it. Um, oh yeah, so 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 as I mentioned earlier, the, it seems like the performance bottleneck here to me is the I/O. But um, 
it does have a USB 3 connector and it also has an Ethernet connector. So um, I haven't tried this, but if you're creative, you can you know, plug a USB 3 connector in there. And then you know, after you boot up, you can do all your file transaction and IO transaction through the USB 3 drive, which presumably should be much faster. And then you know, another, another idea that what I was discussing with my colleague that came up is you know, maybe perhaps you can go through the, do a file system through the, the Ethernet connections, you know, assuming that uh, 100 megabits, you can still get 125 megabyte theoretical max, which would still be orders of magnitude faster than um, going through the class 10 SD card. Um, so there you have it. Um, I, I actually wanted to use this board for, uh, for some other uh, multi-core development purposes, so I purchased it. But then as a side project, I wanted to see how well it fared for, uh, for, for desktop usage. And as, as I've shown that, it's, it's close, but it's not, not quite there yet. I wouldn't use it as a desktop replacement. Oh, oh sorry. another thing I, I wanted to mention is the, uh, the ARM versus Intel, right? So, so, so all the software that you download on your desktop, depending on if you're a Windows user, they're all um, x86. And even on Linux, it's mostly the case and all the pre-packages are already there for, for, uh, for x86 um, architecture. Um, but on the ARM chip, the support, um, not all, like for example, I had, to, I had to recompile a bunch of stuff, right? So for example, I wanted to use Boost and I realized the one that I have, um, Oh, sorry. The one that's that's available on the on the on the ARM repository is is not the version I want. Right? I had to check it out, recompile it using the, the ARM tool chain, and then since I didn't want to set a cross compile, I had to do everything using the tiny um, using the CPU on it, which is fast enough. But then you know the the the, the hard drive, the SD card is not fast enough for for my application, right? So for example, I I wanted to use Eclipse. I want to set up Eclipse CDT. I want to set up Eclipse. And then, you know, I had to use Indigo instead of whatever the latest, unless I want to recompile everything on my end, right? So, um, uh, that's it. Um, I, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Um, and I'll try to keep her out of the room next time. Thanks.